So good evening all. Welcome once again to this exciting class of Excel made easy. So from yesterday's class, we were able to see how we could leverage on the power of Excel and we were able to perform a whole lot of data cleaning in Excel. And today we'll be looking at how to make use of the data entry form and data validation as far as Excel is concerned. So I sent us the tax that we used, that is the Excel file that we used for yesterday's class, as well as a blank Excel worksheet so that you just practice on your own. Hope you went through it. So if you have not, just do well to just look at what we've done yesterday again and go through it because Excel is all about practice, 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 practice. The more you practice, it becomes easier eventually. Then for those of us that were not here yesterday, the video is already on YouTube. You can also, you can check the video on YouTube and do well to subscribe, do well to share the video, do well to like the video. Is that all right? So Microsoft Excel data entry form. So the essence of the data entry form is so to help you to enter data quickly into Excel. Remember the aim of these classes is to actually show us how we can monetize our Microsoft Excel skills. Definitely what we are teaching, you can use it in the corporate world. You can use it to make your work easy. But aside that, eventually, if you want to take it to the next level, you can definitely monetize these skills. How can you monetize it? You can render services in as a freelancer or in, on platform that requires you to do so. Now, for data entry, we're going to learn how to set up data entry form in Excel, how to use data entry form in Excel, what is data validation, how to apply validation rules in Excel and all that. So at any point in time, just like we did yesterday, if you have any question, just raise up your hand or just uh, let us know and we will attend to all questions. On our screen here is this employee list. Is all right. So we'll have the employee list and we'll have the name the gender, the hire date, employee number, and department. Now, the essence of data entry form is to actually help us to enter our data quickly. Now, in the real world, I'm sure the employees should be more than 200, okay, or 100 or 50. So supposing a client uh, eventually give you a set of data and ask you to update a particular database, so you eventually want to start entering this data in this particular spreadsheet. So what, you, what do you eventually want to do? Supposing a new name is being given to you. So supposing someone that is called Mary, Mary and um, the surname is what? So Mary Imaga and she's female. Remember how I uh, have to, she's female. Then you just enter the dates, maybe today's dates. Okay. And uh, a random number. So I just have to press tab to go to the next one. I have to press tab to get to, to go to the next uh, column to fill. Now this can be so daunting. This can be so, so stressful. Supposing we we'll have other columns stretching to this other side of my screen. So it can be so, 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 so uninteresting to scroll and come back and keep on scrolling left and right and all that. So in order to avoid all those form of uh, challenges, the data entry form actually help us to do what? Make our work easier to overcome such challenges. Now, before you can use the data entry form, 
just make sure that the data that you are working with is formatted as a table, All right? What do I mean formatted as a table? So this set of data as it is, make sure that it is formatted as a table. A very quick way to format your data as a table is to press Control T on your keyboard. So when you press Control T on your keyboard, just select any particular cell on any particular cell on on that particular worksheet where your data is. Then press Control T. Okay. Then it brings up this particular box that says what create table. Now, if you don't want to go through this method, I'm going to show you the second method. We always have options. So where is the data for your table? Where do you want it to start from? And where do you want it to end to? So this data in this table is starting from A1 all through E24. Now, if this is not what you want, the data that we are working with can eventually be selected when we click this uh, small box with a red arrow. So once you click this small box with a red arrow, it will ask you to define where your table starts from. Is that okay? If you notice, as I'm dragging it now, it's actually uh, defining it and picking up the range. Okay? So I'm just going to hit escape now, and I'll still be working with what I have before. Control T will bring up the table for me. And there'll be an option for you to decide whether your table has headers or not. So this table actually has headers. So the headers are actually the what? The title of each column. Is okay? So for column A, the title is what? Name, or the header is name. For column B, the header is gender and all that. So you have to tick this particular checkbox to tell Excel that your table has headers. Else, this particular row one will be seen as normal data. Is that making sense? So once you are through with this, you hit OK. But since we don't want to use this method, I want to show the second method, I'll hit cancel. OK, it's actually on the home tab where you have format as table. Is OK? So once you are here, just make sure that a cell in the table is selected all right. So click format as table, then select any of the tables and Excel will format it appropriately for you. Is all right? So I'm just going to select any of this and it will bring up this dialog box again, just like we saw before now. You can easily get to this place by hitting Control T. Is okay? So I hit okay. I need to format my table accordingly. Now, this is the first step that you have to take when you want to use the data entry form. Now, the data entry form is not found anywhere on your Excel worksheet, okay, on the interface. So you actually have to add it up. Is all right? So what I need you to do if you're on your computer, just at this place where you have the quick access to bar, you just click this drop down arrow here. It says or customize quick access to bar. So when you click it, it should bring up all these other options. Then go to what more commands. When you click on more commands, it should bring up this for you. Is that right? So you should be able to do what click on where you have popular command, click on the drop down arrow again, and you should go to what commands not in the ribbon. Is that right? So click on command not in the ribbon, and it should bring up this other option for you. So try and locate where you have what form. Okay. So please do well to call my attention if I'm too fast. Okay. All right. So let's look for form. If it's if you are finding difficult to look for, just hit on F on your keyboard and you should be able to navigate straight to form. So this is form. So select form and hit this add. All right. So form will be added to your quick access bar. So hit what? Okay. Now this option form should be here already. Now we have fulfilled the first criteria and want to add our form. Remember where we started from. We said what? Set up data entry form. 
And the first thing that we have to do is to format our set of data as a table. Now, the second thing is to add the data entry form feature to our quick access toolbar. So once we've added it, make sure that before you can start using the data entry form, that a particular cell within that table is selected, else it will not work. Okay, so supposing I okay, supposing I click outside here and click the data entry form, you notice that it will bring up an error. It says what this can be applied to the selected range. Select a single cell in the range and try again. Okay, so select a single cell. It can be any cell, but let it be within the table. Then you select the data entry form. So it should give you this uh, entry form, all right? Where you have employee list. So it has actually picked up the name or a title for it. And it says what name, gender, hire date, employee number, department. If there are other columns on this particular table, it will be shown vertically here. So you don't need to scroll from left to right. That is one awesome thing about this data entry form. And you should have also see where we have what new, delete, restore, although it's grayed out, find previous, find next, criteria, close. The data entry form is very, very what powerful, such that you can do a whole lot of things on it. Okay. So let us just go through each of these to see how we can use them accordingly. So supposing you want to go to the next item, you can just click what, find next, and to go to the next item. So the next uh, record here is what, mass cell, and all the details is shown. So you can just use this find next to go to the next item accordingly, then find previous to go to the previous item. Now, supposing you want to add a new record, okay? So you just hit on what? New. And at any point in time, you can delete a record. Is that okay? And to tell you what, displayed record will be permanently deleted. So this is a prompt, okay? So you have to confirm it. But I don't want to delete this at this moment, so I hit what? Cancel. So suppose you want to add a new record, I hit on what? New. And every other thing will be blanked out. Okay, so supposing, um, who should we use the name now? So suppose we want to add uh, Mr. Solomon's name to the record. Oh, uh, we should not use Solomon. Okay, let's use, uh, can you edit a previous data or add more information? Definitely, definitely. We are going to look at everything. Let me use, uh, let me add a new name. Bala, okay. Simeon, All right? So this is a new name. Then the gender is male. Then the higher date is, let me just put today's dates. To quickly add today's dates on in Microsoft Excel, just hit control and what semicolon. It should add today's date for you. The control key and semicolon. So the employee number, I'm just going to add some ran random numbers here. Okay, I don't know what it means. So the department is, let's say sales, okay, sales. So once you have finished entering the data, you just hit enter on your keyboard and it should be added to your what? To your records, to your table. Is that making sense? So you can now go ahead to add a new record. Do we have to scroll from left to right? No, we just have to add the record and we are good to go. So just hit close. Let us just check out the new record that we just added. Bala, Simeon, and his mail. And this is the date he was hired. This is his employee number. And this is the department. Is that not awesome? So let us go back to our form and see what more we can do. So someone said, can you edit a previous data? Of course, we can edit a previous data. Supposing you head straight to maybe a data that I want to edit eventually. So suppose we want to edit this person's record. So saw so Corel, I want to change it to maybe saw so, um, what now? Maybe car, Karak, okay? Please, I'm just coming up with all these names. I don't know what it means. <laughs> so 
um, the gender remains the same, the employee number remains the same, and I want to change the department maybe to from sales to communications. Okay, so from sales to communications, so call communications, right? So once you hit enter, once you hit enter, it's going to overwrite what is on saw before and change it and change all the content to this next or the data to this next to this new one that we we'll have here. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, supposing you finish entering the data and you don't want to implement it, what you just need to do is to hit on what restore. Once you hit enter, it is going to be the data you already have there will be overwritten. So I'm going to hit enter now. All right. So remember what you have there before is so Corel, but now I want to change it to what Cara. So you hit enter. I've hit enter on my keyboard. I have selected the next record after saw. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to do what? Go to where we have saw. So this is saw. It is now a saw Karak. And from sales, it is now what? Communications. So if I undo, you should notice that saw is back to what it was before. So I can redo and you notice that it has added what we've just implemented. So hope this makes sense. Now, what other feature have we not looked at? So the criteria. So the criteria can actually be used to carry out specific searches, special searches, okay? So I, I build in hope I've answered your question. Now, criteria can be used to carry out specific searches and to use it, you just fit the criteria. Now, you can actually use it to search for names. So supposing I want to search for all the people that their name is Carol. So I'll just type Carol and I can hit what? Find previous, okay? For people that their name is, sorry. Yes, for people that their name is what? Carol, I can click on find previous, find next and all that, okay? So Carol is just one person, find previous, is showing Carol. Find next is Carol. No other person is bearing what Carol. All right. So supposing I want to find all the people that are under what sales department. So I can just come under department and type what sales. Okay. So once you hit sales, you can click what find next. So all the people under sales will come up. All right. So find next and you should be able to see all the people under sales no other department to be shown except the guys under what sales and you can hit what find previous as the case may be please at any point in time you don't understand what is happening just call our attention all right then supposing we want to find all the people that their gender is what female so what you just need to do is to hit what female in that box are we communicating? So hit what female in that box. And I'm going to delete sales so that it will not just find females that are under sales department. Is that right? <laughs> so if you put it female and sales, that means it's going to be like an intersection. It must be sales and females at the same time. But let us remove sales and let us just find all the guys that are what females. So everything here that is appearing to be what females. So you can edit any female data accordingly. Hope we are communicating, okay? If you have any question, let us know. So every other person that is coming here is female, all right? So just so that you know, the building says, assuming you are asked to sort out all person in a particular department. So that's just what we've done, all right? So you can just type the name of the department. Right, but the essence of this criteria is so that once you are searching it out, you can edit the details at that particular instance. All right, so if you want to eventually filter, you can use the filter button. But the essence of criteria here is so that we can filter and edit instantly. All right, so supposing we want to find out people that are under assistance, is assistance 
All I just use management. People that are under management department. So I'll just go and type management. So in order to be on the safer side, make sure you type the management the way it is on your table. Is that making sense? So make sure you type management the way it is on your table. So I'm going to remove the S and hit find next. So Maka, this Maka, whatever guy is on management team. So hit next. I think he's the only guy on management. Okay, okay, there's another Juan. Juan Musa is on management. So two of them are on management. Okay, so you can edit their records accordingly. Wow. Is there any question before we go to the next item on our list? So once you've edited the record, you hit on what? Close. To use the data entry form is very, very easy. Now, there's another thing that you can do on the data entry form. That is to carry out special searches. So suppose you want to search for maybe all the people that their name start with what? Maybe M. All the people that their name start with what? M. So in order to do this, what you just need to do is to type in M, then add a wild card. That's what is called a wild card in Microsoft Excel. And one of the wild card is the asterisk, all right? So the asterisk. So I hold down my shift key and I press what? Asterisk or the eight key accordingly. Then when I hit what? Find next. So all the people that their name start with what? M is going to find it for me. So all the people that their name start with M is going to find it for me. So find previous. Is that right? Okay. Now, supposing I want to search for all the people that their name does not start with M. So I want to exclude all M. So what I can do is to enter this key that you are seeing on my keyboard now, or that I'm imputing now, the greater than and the less than, then type in what M. Okay. So I want to find out all the people that their name start with every other letter but what M or does not include M. Does that make sense? So once you hit find next, every other people that their name start with every other letter will appear, but not what M. Is that okay? Maybe the people that their name start with M have already done work on them. And I want to include every other person. Does that make sense? So it's very easy to use the wildcard tools in your data entry form. There's a whole lot of possibilities to what you can do. Is that okay? Now, supposing I can also use this wildcard tool to exclude all the, all the sales departments, all right? So I can use this. this. What this actually means is does not include. Okay, so when you translate it to English, it means what does not include in Excel actually. So I can just type in what sales. When you're typing sales, make sure that it's exactly as it is on the table. So when you click find next, every other thing will come up under departments or every other person under in the table will come up, but not people that, in, that are in the sales department. Is all right. So every other person in the table will come up, but not people that are in the sales department, okay? So hope this uh, helps us to answer the questions. And if you have any question, please just drop it before we go to the next one. So the next item that we'll be looking at is data validation in Excel. So have five minutes. Let me see what you can do within that five minutes. Data validation in Excel. So data validation is actually some certain rules that is set in Microsoft Excel so that while entering data, it can check whether it is valid or not, okay? Now, as a data analyst or as a, an expert in data entry, you can ensure that whatever is entered into this particular cell is either male or female, or it does not contain more than one letter. Does that make sense? Okay, so you can actually define that in this instance using data validation. How do you do that? So what you just need to do is to come to your menu tab, then go where you have what? Data, all right? So where you have data, you see where you have data validation under the data tools. So what you just need to do is to 
select that the whole column that I want to validate, then click on what data validation. All right. So once you click on data validation, it should bring up this data validation cycle, invalid data, clear validation cycles. So click on data validation, and you should see this new uh, window come up. Okay. Now you have data validation settings. So under settings, you have validation criteria, allow any value, then you have all this. You have input message, you have error alerts. Is all right. So we are going to be ending this class now and I'm going to start it immediately because I don't want to be taken on our web by Zoom. So once I end it, I'm going to resume it. So what you just need to do is to join back immediately. Are we together? So I'm going to end this class now. So just join back immediately once the class ends. So data validation. So make sure that the column that you want to validate is selected. Then you do what? Come to data in the menu tab. Go, go under what? Data. Then under data tools, ribbon, select what? Data validation. And you should be able to see what? Data validation selected. So here we have what validation criteria. What should be allowed in this column? Is it any value? So any value definitely is allowed by default. Then when you want to actually set some rules, you click the drop down button. And you should see whole number, decimal, list, date, time, text length, then custom. So we want it in such a way that Whatever text length that want to be entered here should not be more than what? One, okay? That is male or what? Female. So you select text length. It's just like an instance, all right? So the data should be between minimum or maximum. So just make sure that it's equal to, use the equal to option, is all right? Then the length should be what? One, all right? So just hit one on your keyboard and you should be able to select the length, all right? Now, okay, so once you've done this, just hit what, okay. Now, before you hit okay, I want us to also go ahead to where we have the input message. Now, the input message is so that, show input message when a cell is selected. When cell is selected, show this input message. So the input message would kind of guide you, okay? In this particular column, you are not expected to enter numbers that are more than one. Is that okay? So I'm going to just give it a title. Maybe pay attention, pay attention, or attention, or whatever you can think of that will draw somebody's attention. Enter only single value, all right? So you hit what? Okay, but before we hit okay, let us go to error alert. Error alert is what will really show the person if the person eventually go ahead to disobey the validation that you set, okay? I'm setting a rule, I'm probably anybody down to enter data will actually see that, okay, you are not supposed to do this. So eventually the person go ahead to violate or go against the rule, what should Excel tell the person? So when user enters invalid data, show this error alert. So you have three different error alerts. You have stop, warning, information. So if you are using stop, that means the person cannot proceed except the person does the right thing, all right? So the title of this warning should be what? Should we say do the right thing? <laughs> do the right Thing. So the MSA should be what? Enter male or female. Enter, okay, male, M or female. So it should kind of direct them on what to do, the right thing to do, okay? So enter male or female. So I hit enter. Now, my data validation is in place. Now, supposing I want to change any data here and I start typing in another data. It says what? 
pay attention, enter only single value. So I've entered a single value, but suppose I want to make it double and I hit enter. Notice what comes up. Enter M or what? F. Is that right? So I cannot enter any number that is more than a single value. And it's also guiding me on what to do exactly. So if I click retry, it will not eventually go through unless I do the right thing. Okay. So I can just go ahead to enter the right value and it will accept it accordingly. Now, some people will actually question, what if I enter D here? What will happen? D will definitely enter. This data validation rule actually is to help us not to enter value exceeding one or single value, right? But every other letter that is single can enter. Now, there's also a way that you can make it in such a way that only F and M is acceptable, but that is advanced data validation. So we should just, uh, I will advise us to just leave it at this instance and just know that you can restrict the length of data that can be entered. Now let us see if we can even, let us see if we can use our form to enter a new data and let us see if data validation will actually call our attention when we enter maybe male instead of M in gender column. Let us use um, uh, a name and just some of these names that comes to my mouth. Just coming up with funny names. So male, right? So I just, probably I don't know, I just enter mail. So higher date is today's date, control and semicolon. Employee number is some random numbers, okay? Then department is, let's just use uh, sales. So let us see if Excel will actually accept this data from us. So it bounced back. So do you see how important data validation can be in a particular table, All right? So you don't need to go to the office, please in column C, don't enter data that is different from male or female. You can just set it up and send it to the other guy in the other office. So everything will be automated, All right? So even if a client requires you to validate data, there are a whole lot of ways to validate data, which we have seen. You can validate data in such a way that the date entered should be, or the date entered should be within a given range. All right. So help. Hope this helps. And uh, if you have any question, let us know. Okay. Please question time. Let us know if you have any question. This class is actually straight to the point. We don't have a whole lot to cover. And unfortunately, if many people did not join the class, so tomorrow is going to be the final day, and it's going to be. Massive. I'm going to also be uh, uploading this uh, recording to YouTube. So do well to also check it out in case probably there's anything that you don't understand. Tomorrow we are going to be looking at the third or uh, the the third day. That is other ways that you can monetize your Excel skills. Uh, it's going to be powerful. So do well to attend. So let me know if you have any question. All right. So sometimes people ask me, why are you doing these free trainings? All right. Teaching corporate organizations Excel is what we do. So if you can refer us to any corporate organization, we'll be super, super uh, happy. All right. So this is our way of giving back to the society as well as creating awareness. Supposing people need training, supposing you need personal training, one-on-one -on -one training, you can also always contract us. So thank you very much. If you don't have any question, uh, we're ending the class now, all right? We're ending the class now. So just say something, maybe if you enjoyed the class, just say something in the group, all right? So just say how excited you are. Give us a wonderful review. So it's the review that keeps us pushing as far as this uh, free classes is concerned, all right? So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Abiodun. Thank you very much, Mr. Solomon. Thank you very much, everyone. So go to the group, drop a feedback. All right, drop a feedback. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. Bye-bye for now.